you can tell it's cold. The river froze up overnight. We were down to minus 16, minus 17 centigrade last night, so the seagulls can't even escape now and get warm by putting their feet in the water. And I always feel really bad for them at this point. So I just threw some cat food down for them. This is a tough time of year for birds. Not being very nice to each other though. It's a really cold morning. It's completely frozen up right the way across. And it usually doesn't do this. This is the first time in seven years because we have a ferry that crosses the river and that actually stops it from freezing just up river there. So down here we stay thawed out, but it's cold. Okay, this is a red clay tile that's just under a quarter of an inch thick that I rolled out on my slab roller and you can watch how you, another video to see how I make uh, big tiles, but it's literally roll out with a rolling pin or use a slab roller. So you've got a slab that's about a quarter of an inch thick just under uh, and uh, and cut it into a square. And it's pretty easy. So, But I have a whole video on rolling slabs which you can look at as well. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Anyway, I pour white slip in the center. And then using a Japanese or Chinese hake brush, I think hake is the actual word for paintbrush, I think in Chinese. But, uh, but anyway, uh, you just spread it out. I was talking to a subscriber today who was asking me how to do this, so I figured I'd do a, a quick demo of it. Because I just posted that video of me carving a large tile. And I've made six of these today, so I'm going to be carving six tiles. Keep me busy during the winter months. Something that takes a long time to do. Take, you know, literally, it takes me a day to carve one of these. So I have to do this twice. So that's the first coat and I will paint another coat tomorrow morning. It's six o'clock in the evening. So basically it's when I'll do a coat of white again and then I'll do a thin coat of yellow. Okay. Here I'm trying the Diamond Core Tool PF1, um, which is a really nice tool to hold, um, and it's brand new, so um, the, the top edge is, let's see if I can get you a close-up here, it's too close I guess, yeah it's too, too hard to see, you can see it's, it's a fairly fine point, uh, it's not as fine as what I usually use, um, which is a Kemper tool. Um, but this is very nice to hold um, and what I'm doing is I'm trying because it doesn't have such a fine point on it as the Kemper one I'm trying to actually use the side of the tool a little bit and because I layer my clay it actually will give me a kind of a colored edge I think because I have yellow under on the top of the white here but this is a very easy tool to hold I'm pretty much holding it between those two fingers there. Um, so I can see this one might become a nice addition to my arsenal for carving tools. This clay is a little soft, and I think this tool is not creating a burr either. As I showed you doing the carving with the other tools on the actual mugs, um, every tool will have a different application, but I'm just using the side here. It's kind of nice to be able to hold it without having the leaks in your fingers after a while, because it's such a big tool to hold with that, and you can twist a little bit with my fingers to give that kind of funny mark that I did there where the yellow showing through. 
it's a brand new tool for me to carve with here, so I'll have to discover what it actually can do. So it can do a fine line. If you notice what I'm doing here, it's fairly fine. But if I put down on the side here, I can make that line really wide. So the fine and the wide from the same tool, depending on how I hold it. My cat's actually watching the birds. You can hear in the background I have a fan running. I'm trying an air purifier at the moment, too. So in the winter we close the rooms up because of the cold. It's not cold today though. But um, and then you've got your dust, so I've got an air purifier going to try and get the dust out of the air. Kubel has it's part of her issue that she's not well, which is better than she was, but but she has breathing issues. squeaking because there's a bird right outside the window. So there you go, we can pull down. So I like this tool. They're kind of the Rolls Royce, I guess, of the tools that are available at the moment. Um, I, one I do the drawing with is this little ball one. They also sell one like this, but this is the Kemper version. See how I've put the duct tape all the way around it to make it big enough to hold? Um, because this one can get kind of hard on your fingers when this is just a small tool. So I like a sort of broader tool to carve with. Um, but this one comes with these foam pieces over there. deeper and get some brown to show through if I want to, but I don't think I want too much of that in the sky. But that sort of warms up the carved lines a little bit. But yeah, this is actually... a nice tool to carve with. Yeah, this was um, got for me by one of my subscribers, Brenda, out in California. Hi, Brenda. And it's actually New Year's Day today. Went for a nice beach walk this morning because it was four degrees when we got up and it got even warmer today. Anyway, that's my little review of that tool, PF1 it's called, and this one is called a P12. Was the other one PF? Yeah, PF. This one's called P12, um, and this is a slightly thicker version of the same tool, I think. Everything about it is the same, only the actual, uh, can you get it visually, I don't know, focal point of an iPad, eh? It's a bigger version. But um, I'm, I'm noticing that my carved lines are slightly different to the other tool that I use. But this is definitely easy to hold. My other tool is a pretty narrow tool, if I can find it. See, I've had to put rubber bands around these to make them easier to hold. But that has a, a thin piece of wire on it. And this one, it's actually a little difficult to hold, but it makes it, this one makes it really, I don't even know where I got those from, but they're, they're, they're nice carving tools, but just too thin to hold. Um, and this one, I did the rubber band and the duct tape around to make it easier to hold. Um, but that's also got the thin piece of wire. This one's wearing out, and I love this tool, but it's almost gone. So, uh, and I'm not sure how much I paid for these, uh, but I've had them for a long time. But that one, the wire is just about worn through. Too bad, because I love that tool. I have to look for it again. 
but, um, but this one, I think this one could have a square end, uh, and it would be the same as that one. I would like to see one of these with a wider edge at the bottom down there, and that could be a nice carving tool to replace the other one, because this is definitely much easier to hold. I think this one's so easy to hold that I'm doing more jumpiness in my line. A zigzaggy effect almost, which I don't do with the other tool. But it is easy to sort of scoot down the depth of the one layer of clay and not go through to the third layer of clay. So that tool, and I can kind of make a curve or a zigzaggy approach. Depending if you hold it flat or if you hold it. But it, it, it's definitely going under the clay a little bit too. So then you'd be able to get that. I just did a little brown area there. Yeah, for this detail stuff, I think I prefer the other one. But because um, the PF1 is a nicer edge, I think, to carve. But that one is a P12. And I have carved mugs, as you saw with these, so um, they definitely um, are really nice to carve the mugs. But, uh, and what else do we have in here? They've sent me another version. It's very similar to the other one. What's the number on this? This is P21. What's the difference between those two? You know, I'm not seeing any difference there. Oh, I do. I see that there's a, a rounder edge. This is convex, and this one is almost concave a little bit as it goes in. So you can see there. But the edge is a bit square, and this one's a V-shape. So let's try the square one now. See what that one does. Just stay over here so you can see it a bit. It's nice for detail. Oh, I'm able to control it nicely. No, it's definitely nice to control. The square of the tool is easy to hold in the hand, and then the rubber area is easy on the fingers, too. Let's see what the other one is. This is a really big rounded edge, so maybe I should use this one down the lower area. And we can try and get some, see whether we can actually, oh yes. That's very nice to carve with. I can be very gentle, they give me a rounded edge. But for some broader areas, this one's quite nice. I haven't drawn out the boats, so I'm going to put some boats in here. I've drawn them, but I haven't actually done the outline yet. I wouldn't use these for the outline. I like to use the stylus that has like a round ball on the end. But this gives you a really, so you've got less lines, more of the white. So this one is going to be a nice tool. Look at that nice, easy to control. I'm not going through too deep. Using kind of the side of the tool a little bit rather than the point. Yep, so this one I like. For the mark that I'm getting with it, I like this all the best of all these so far. And then the last one they sent me, it's got a really rounded edge. And this was really nice for carving the mugs and all that. So, um, but I'm assured, you know, with this one, I'm going to get a really wide. Oh, yes. So this one is going to be nice for carving when you don't want too much black to show through. So this will be very useful. 
All right, so that great for those marks. The detail one up here um, is, is basically just leaving it very busy with the lines. Um, but for carving on the piece, I'll just get used to using these, but they're diamond core tools. This one is a P22, and there's a lot of tools. Their catalog is really nice. You can see everything online, but they have a really nice catalog showing the tools. So this is great for you to look through if you're looking for that. I think everything should be to scale here too. Um, but um, and look, there's one that has the Y, ah, and there's another one here, P24. I need to get myself a P24, I think. Um, see because that's very similar to the one that I'm wearing now so I better look online oh p19 that one looks like it's one I would use so I'd get p19 and p24 if I was going to get some more of these tools which I will do um, the thing that's nice about these is this one is wearing out I have to buy the whole tool again to get that and it's a lot of stuff to throw away this one you just buy the end and so basically you can replace the little ends which I haven't priced, I'm not sure what they cost, but, um, but it's just a screw holding it, so that means you're not throwing a lot away each time, um, and it's very comfortable, so, um, uh, but there's a lot to pick from here, so I Some more carving ideas here for this uh, test of I'm using these diamond core tools. Uh, I've been using them off and on for a week or so now um, for the uh, sgraffito carvings as well as uh, I'm now going to do some other carvings. But um, So I kind of like the fact that they're easy to hold. Um, and the rubber around there is really nice, and they're also square, so that gives you something to actually grip on uh, a little easier as well. And I really like the fact that you can change the heads, because I throw out my carving tools all the time. This is my favorite carving tool of all, but I, I, I have to throw the whole thing out every time I wear that tiny thin end. But this is for the detailed carvings, I have to have something that fine in a, uh, to get a lot of that detail. Um, but it is a, a sad situation when I, I mean, if you could just buy that little head bit there again and just slot it in and out, that would be a great improvement on this tool so you don't have to throw the whole thing out. And this is another carving tool that I really love as well. Um, but these heads break off when I'm carving. I've, I've had them snap. So, um, uh, so there's, you know, it's nice to have a tool that um, where you're thinking about, you know, save the environment. You don't have to throw the whole thing out. You just have to replace that tiny little head. And it's a well-made, really strong head. And it's quite sharp. I like that too. The metal actually in those scrivito carvings really did do a nice job. Um, so let's see what we can do with some mugs here. Um, I've thrown these mugs a little heavier. Um, and I'm going to see how I can do... I mean, like, there's so many... I've got five heads, but there's looks like there's dozens of these available um, and so it's just a matter of deciding what you want to do I mean the standard fluting that we do uh, this is what I've done but you didn't see <laughs> anyway let's go with a different one all right so we're gonna try and carve this let's see if I can get you 
as far over here as you can. No, that's not good. Can you see this? Yeah, let's go ahead. So this one's an easy one to hold, and it's the widest one they, that they've sent me. Um, carving, you have to be comfortable. The tool has to be gripped nicely in your hand, and your movements have to be repetitive and even to do something like this. So you'll have to try a few before you get good at it. But I tell you, this tool is really nice to work with. I didn't have any problems there whatsoever. So let's do another one and see what we get with a different head. These mugs are thrown with about uh, almost a quarter pound more clay than I would normally use, so I've made them thicker. Okay, this is a smaller head. I think it's a big difference between the other one. Um, but let's see what we get with this one. I'm doing it at a slight angle. This is uh, recycled clay, so I just cut into something foreign in my clay there. And again there. But that's the sweeping, this is the sweepings off the floor as far as my clay body goes. That, oh, there it is, let's see what that was. Yeah, it came out, yeah. So I can just brush that, that'll be good. See, that's a very clean, quite even, carving that I can do. So what else do we have? That's two of them. I should tell you the tool names as well. P22 is the wide one. P17 is the narrower version of that. And here we go with this one. These mugs are easy to carve because um, I, I, it, they actually go down. It gets wider at the bottom, so I actually find it a nice shape. Now this one's a very detailed looking tool though, so I'm not sure what that's, that's not going to do much, I don't think. This is more for detailed scraffito carving, I think. Um, what do we have here? And that one is a P21. I was doing the scraffito with that one, I think. Um, and this is PF1. I was definitely using this one for the scraffito. Uh, this one was done for, the, for some detailed stuff. And then this one has a sort of a point, but it's got a thicker area. Um, I don't think this one will work, but I could try it at an angle. Let's see what happens if I do it at an angle. Doing like a curvy swipe here. So the tool is digging in and going in at a quite a little angle. It's harder to get this even a little bit. Let's hold it at the top, maybe that'll be easier. Yeah, you don't want to carve anything too thin with this, because this has got a point on it. You could go into the mug itself. It's not too bad. And then th that one you'd have to use a brush maybe to even that out. And it's not too sharp now, but wait till after the firing. I wonder if that would be sharp. But that's pretty easy too. That'll catch the glaze really well. And of course, I've got a lot of these mugs. We could do some... Actually, you know what might be nice? Let's see whether I can do a little stamping thing on one. I think it might be too dry for these, but I've got stamps here. Yeah, this is pretty dry clay for stamping. I'm pushing with my finger under the back of it. You can just see it. So you could actually carve a, use the tools to carve something. Oh, I should have pressed these in when it was a little softer, but it's working. You could, there's a tenant, you could, you could crack a piece if you're doing that. And then of course with the carved lines, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this. I'll have to do it from And you're going to get into something fairly detailed. I'm just trying to see how comfortable these are for holding. It's nice. I'm making it up as I go along. 
winging it, as we used to say. The tool holds well. I mean, I love this one actually for mugs is the best. And of course, they've only sent me five tools here, so um, there's so much more available on their site. And I know I've got to get a couple more. Um, cool. Okay, let's try. Um, I wonder if I should try carving from the other side down. That's probably a little harder, I think. Let's see what we get with this one. I'm trying not to hit the rim of the mug. I want to get the tool to miss, so I'm hitting the duct tape. I should buy stock in duct tape, I guess. I do think that the first thing I think of when I have to do a repair in my studio is where's my duct tape? That's not so bad. It's very similar to the other one, but done from the other direction. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if I tried to do it across there. Let's see what happens this time. It's quite a nice texture there, actually, and it didn't take very long to do that. Yeah, that's that's got some potential there. Yeah, this is a bit stiff too. If I'd got these a little softer, I would try to um, uh, do a stamping combination for for these a bit more. Let's go with like this. This is I usually when I'm carving, doing my fluting for a lot of my pieces, I use a potato peeler. that gives me a really wide fluted line. There we go. So that one there. So what happens if I go the other side now? These are so sharp, they really go through the clay nicely. Let's see if I can do it from this side so you can see it a bit easier. Is that going to make it easier if I do it there? Let's see. So I'm just doing it from the middle, just left. Yeah, that, that I'm actually very happy with the way these hold in my hand. So that's much more kind of intense as far as the number of marks on that one. We'll have to see what some of these look as they come out of the kiln. Let's see if I can leave them. Um, I'm going to try and do this one. I'm see. I know. I'm going to carve from this side. Okay. So let's go down. I'll leave a bit bigger gap here. Yeah, I'm always nervous about hitting a a pebble. The most common thing I find in my recycled clay is little bits of gravel that I bring in on my bottom of my shoes from outside, especially this time of year when you're bringing snow-covered shoes in. Let's see what else do we have here. This narrow one. Let's see if we can do a line in between every one of these. Yeah, we can have a lot of textural mugs. It'd be kind of interesting to use some semi transparent glazes. Variegated blue is great when you've got this kind of texture. 
and Tenmoku Gold looks pretty good in these two. Opaque glazes don't look as nice. So there's a wide and a narrow line in that one. Uh, let's see. This is the narrow tool here. Um, so let's just do another one of the cross ones. I'm going to hit the handle there. Yeah, moving the mug round just the right amount of space is probably going to take a while for somebody new to, to do this. Let's go the other way now. I'm going to hold it down. So when you do wrap around mugs on slab rolling, basically it's easy to texture clay, but it's very hard to texture clay when it's out thrown form because you're deforming it. Okay, so that's using that tool, which is the P P17. We won't really know until we glaze these what they're going to look like. But after you've done something like this, really kind of make sure you've got no sharp burrs on the piece. Well, that looks pretty darn good, I think. We've got one more. All right, what do we have? We have the, the very fine ones. I'm just going to stick with it for Scorpedo. Um, but there's a couple of tools I've looked on the catalog. They have a really nice little catalog here. Um, and uh, it's got lots of nice things in it. So... Um, but there's one in here I looked at the other day I'm going to order because I really liked it. It's, I think it, oh, there it is, the flat-headed ones. Um, like this one, P24, I'm going to order myself one of those. Um, and I might get one of these P23s as well. Uh, although I think, no, P25 looks like it might be a better one for the Scrafito pieces. And, um, but they really, they show you the actual mark that it cuts as well, which is really nice. Um, so they've done a very professional job with these, I know. Um, and what haven't we done here? It's, uh, I suppose you could actually just try wiggling it. If I can do that as I'm carving, see what it does. Now I need a brush to get rid of all that. So that wasn't pressing very hard, it was just pulling it down over the surface and wiggling it. You know what it reminds me of is chain link fence, and I'm not sure that's a good thing. But um, I suppose I could do it again. Um, but, uh, but I don't think, I think less is more sometimes. But that's kind of nice. Um, Alright, so my review of these tools is that I think uh, it's a nice addition to your arsenal of tools. Um, so, um, so diamond core tools. There you go. Um, tell your mom and dad. Tell your grandparents. You want some tools for Christmas or your birthday? Because um, these are worth it. And I love that you can change these heads. I've always thought that that would be a. I you know I, I've made tools myself over the years, um, and uh, you know it's it's nice if you can just. Have this really good attachment at the top and um did they yeah they sent me a spare um so they come in a little plastic thing there there's a spare one in there or not but um yeah. okay dokie um well anything else to go here um it's a nice evening outside <laughs> i'll show you outside my seagull is there uh, 
He's sitting right up opposite me, thinking, when am I getting fed? <laughs> it is freezing out there. I mean, we're getting highs of minus 12 on Monday and Tuesday, supposedly. And it's going down to minus 12 tonight for the low. Um, but at least we don't have feet of snow inland. It's just like a foot of snow. We, didn't, we only got a two inches of snow last night. I was pretty happy about that. Anyway, I'll talk to you later.